G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Akathlos and today we're going to be continuing Annie's Chapter 2 of her campaign here in the Path of Champions inside of Legends of Runeterra. So let's get this episode started. As you can see, I'm already at a power tap because I accidentally clicked on the, uh, what is it, the power node in a sense. So it brought me there and immediately it gave me this window. It's a minor setback, a minor technicality, nothing too severe so we can of course proceed from there. Uh, but yeah, we're going to have to pick a power here and we have a new student, Game Start Summon a Sparring Student, Welcome Gifts. When you summon an ally, grant a random keyword and counterfeit production round start create a fleeting zero cost counterfeit copies in it um i'm gonna be honest with you these isn't you know these three powers aren't really the best in my opinion uh counterfeit production is not gonna be too great in this one because there's really no benefit to uh, creating that many uh cards i would say you know it could be good when you think about it in the long run but I, the last thing i want is to overwhelm my hand with too many uh, unnecessary cards so i think we're just gonna bypass the counterfeit production uh some of the sparring student could of course be good but I think I'm just going to go with the welcome gifts because we get a random keyword on each ally. So it could, you know, it's a, it's a little bit RNG based. If we get a shit power, um, a shit keyword, well, I think there's hardly a shit keyword to be fair. But, you know, per se, if we get a keyword that is not that great for us, um, it could, you know, backfire in the end. But I think we're still going to go over it because I think the, the reward outweighs the risk in this instance. So let's go ahead and pick this up. All right, and we come to our first um, juncture, our first junction, our first fork, and essentially we can either go for the easier one, which is going to bring us to the Soul Scroll, uh, down to the Healer, and then into the Tasty Fey Folk, or we can of course go down to the Arbiter of the Peak and take on a very tough enemy. Now, I think what I'm going to do for this episode, because I am feeling a little bit adventurous, um, we're going to actually go down to the Arbiter of Peak and we're going to try to take it on. That's because uh, when I did the Annie run for the first time, you know, my personal run off camera, um, I actually went with the easier puff and that was how i got the s patch in if you caught that in the previous episode but i think for this you know um you know episode on the channel here um on the you know the, the series on the channel part of the series on the channel i think we're gonna go and be a bit adventurous we're gonna go for the tough battle here against the arbiter of the peak so bear in mind this is a vicious enemy and of course um it's gonna be fairly difficult i would say and this sounds like a recipe for disaster if i'm being honest because if you've caught my previous videos you know for a fact that i make um some stupid and silly mistakes admittedly and i feel like this is definitely a recipe for disaster but you know we're just gonna be bold we're gonna be brave we're gonna give it a shot here um if per se the run ends no harm done we're just gonna redo the run and of course we're just gonna continue from where we last left off and then move on from there but uh for the first time we're gonna try this arbiter of the peak run and see if we if, if i can beat it of course and i think it's gonna make for some great you know for a great video so i think this is what everyone wants to see as well um versus the you know harder enemy okay so let's go ahead and take it on mountain peak game start the foe summons a targets peak round and all players draw a card all right so let's go ahead and take it on after falling through Zoe's portal, you land on a big old mountain plateau next to a giant blue guy. What a day you're having. <laughs> that sounds, you know, like quite the day to be fair. Oh yeah, let's go ahead and take him on. Okay, um, not a bad start. We get Annie, which is good. I'm definitely going to reroll the death hand, the, you know, the death hand and the other might. I don't think that's going to be too important. Um, the death sand can actually be good. Uh, you know what? We'll keep one death sand. We'll reroll, reroll, we'll reroll the other one, and then we'll also take off the mic. So I think that would be important. We get two Annies this time, which isn't that great. But uh, you know, um, we can of course play one of them and get the free damage. Random keyword overwhelm on any isn't that good either. Um, I think what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to go ahead and take out the, what is it, the Crest of Insight. I know it has the last breath and it will summon a, uh, you know, a landmark that will get an extra mana gem, but it's for that round only. So I'd rather have it waste its mana gem um, on the early rounds. That way we don't have to deal with potentially, you know, um, threatening units. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a deal four to this guy. Oh, 
Okay, we get a free attack uh, because, you know, it has the free attack and we can, of course, take it out. Uh, but I'm not expecting much. I'm probably going to suspect a fight on Ibex for block. Even if I attacked, you know, before I did the uh, Knife's Edge, I think it would have, wouldn't have made a difference because obviously the Blue Sentinel can block. But at least we get rid of it and that way we try to force this guy to block and we get, you know, more units off the board. Oh, you are kidding me. <laughs> RNG is not in my favor today. Um, okay, okay, it's fine. We can deal with this. We can, of course, deal with this. Let's do this. Let's, uh, this is a good chance to try this. Let's do a disintegrate. Um, no, let's do a Blade's Edge first. Then we follow that up with a disintegrate. That way we have the disintegrate trigger first, and then we have the blade's edge, and it should kill the arbiter of the peak. Okay, I'm happy with that. I think we'll stun this guy. Get an early Tibbers as well. Very, very nice. We have not played it yet, but, you know, I suspect this battle might, you know, require Tibbers to intervene in some way. Um, we'll take the 4 damage. We arguably should have stunned this guy, but it's okay. We'll take the 4 damage. We'll bring on the Legion Saboteur because there's really nothing we can do at this point. No one it's fine. Wise. Okay, I'm gonna bring on a Mana Soul. Is that what we do? Do we bring on the Mana Soul? Mm, is there any incentive to bring on the Mana Soul? I'm worried that he might have some expensive units, you know, coming on, so... Um, you know what? We can, of course, try to take it out with the Blade's Edge, and we also have the Stun on hand as well. That could be good. Is that what we want to do? I don't know. Uh, okay, you know what? Let's go ahead and just deal damage here. I don't want to play too, you know, too smart or anything. I'm just going to go ahead and do flat-out damage. Since we can have the uh, advantage here to, you know, kick, take them out. And, of course, because, you know, the health advantage. The Le Legion Saboteur is at 2 health. Uh, sorry, 2 power. And these guys are all 2 health or under. So, I think we have the good advantage here. Okay, let's go ahead and just um, attack this. Um... Any will survive, right? Yes, any will survive. Oh, okay. So, I think it's good that we didn't, uh, you know, we didn't, um, what do you call that? We didn't play that there because I think this could be a bit of a problem. Um, let's see what we do. I think we bring on the... Mana Soul here. I have a plan, actually. I, I hope it works. We'll bring on the Mana Soul. We'll use, we'll waste the Guile on the Fuse Firebrand. Um, oh, hold on, sorry, that's the wrong one. Thank God I got that. There we go, the Guile. Okay, the Zero Cost Guile, we'll waste it on the Fuse Firebrand. Get rid of the Spell Shield, and then we can dump the Blade's Edge. We'll take out the, uh, we'll bring it down to 5-1. Next turn, we'll do another one, and then we'll kill it. So that could be good. Let's just hope that it doesn't have one more on standby. <laughs> I 
Yeah, ideally that was what I was worried about because we have a lot of, you know, we're generating a lot of cards, so I'm a bit worried that, um, you know, it might uh, screw things up first. But uh, looks like we can actually bring on Tibur soon, which could be good. Uh, stun an enemy, then deal five to all stun or damaged enemies. Mm. We definitely don't have enough time to play stuns. Okay, you know what? Let's bring on a Tibbers here. Let's bring him on. We can kill this guy, and whatever it sends out, we can of course respond with our spells. Okay, let's do that. Let us stun one of the tree twos. Alright, it's fine. It's okay. Mm, okay, we have the death sign. Cool. So we do five to this guy. And we do four to him as well. That should kill him. Uh, we have to deal with them. So I think what we'll do is we'll do we'll dump Tibbers on the tree two here. That way we take out the tree power and we have a, a fearsome Tibbers that, you know, this guy can't block next turn, which could be good. Uh, do we want to block any with this? Do we want to block any with this? You know what? Let's go for it. It should be fine. Okay, it's alright. Past this turn, we'll attack with all that we've got. We should be okay. We have Darius on zero cost as well, which is cool. But we're not going to bring him on on favor of getting more damage here. Okay, we actually win here. Um, Blade's Edge, deal 4. 17 plus 4 is 21. <laughs> Battle rewards, add two copies of a card to your deck. This could all be actually very, very good. Um, because, you know, Piercing Darkness, Dane Drain 5 from a unit with the Plunder, that's essentially a tree cost Piercing Darkness. Um, but the fact that we need to trigger Plunder to get its reduced cost is kind of sketchy. Deal 5 with the Shunpo, deal 2 to an enemy, then rally. Grant your strongest ally random common item this game. This is very, very good to be fair, because it's a free rally as well. Um, so we can, you know, keep attacking. Revenous Flock, deal 4 to a unit of its damage or stun. Grant your strongest ally a random rare item this game. This is much better. Um, I know this is rally, but I think this is much better because it has, you know, one cost and at the same time, deal 4 to a unit of its damage or stun. It's a fast spell. It helps any progress or level up and grant your strongest ally a random rare item. So this is definitely much better. Okay, we'll pick this one up. All right, and let's go ahead and head on to the move the next power. To be fair, that battle went much smoother than I expected. I think it's because I am at a higher level on any, admittedly. Uh, but at the same time, we also have a better relic on her. So, you know, it's possibly one of those reasons. But, you know, it should be fine. Let's just go ahead and move on into the power here and pick the next uh, power up. Hopefully something good. Cards to draw cost one less. This one damaging enemy access grant the top ally in your deck plus one plus one. Allies have plus one plus zero. Okay, um, these are all very, very good as well. We have two rerolls. Uh, we could, of course, use the reroll here, but I don't think I want to waste the rare. Do we want to wait? Do we want to waste this? You know what? This is the final stretch. This is the last, um, you know, the last uh, uh, note we're taking on Lulu. We might as well just use it. So let's use all our rerolls, or, you know, hopefully when we stumble upon something good, we'll just grab that instead. So I'm going to possibly be bypassing a very good power here, but in favor of getting something better. When you summon an ally, deal one to the enemy nexus <laughs> i'm picking this up no question about it i'm picking this up no question about it okay so with that in mind we can finally take on lulu and we might even be able to wrap up any um you know series in this episode here so let's go and take her on um adorbus round start transform the player's strongest follower into a 1-1 squirrel and silence it this round okay cool hi 
Hi, I'm Lulu. What you doing in the Bandle Woods? Is that what this is? Me and Tibbers used to live in woods just like these. Well, that's kind of true because I have read Annie's lore and that is definitely a, you know, a well-established fact. And then we were taken to a school. <laughs> to meet I guess you. someone hates school. And obviously, um, I don't blame her because, you know, from what we've seen of the Ravensbloom Conservatory in the card, doesn't look like a fun place, but, uh, you know, I, that's up to debate of the uh, Noxian citizens or something. But, yeah, uh, finally you near the exit of this strange place. All that stands between you and freedom now is Lulu. Great. Okay, so let's go ahead and take her on. All right, two Annie's, a Death's Hand, and a Mite. We are going to remove the Mite. We are going to remove one Annie, and we should be cooking. Ooh, this Tibbers is a teddy bear. Can I hug him? Not just any teddy bear. <laughs> Get him, Tibbers. <laughs> That's a, you know, a signature catchphrase, by the way, uh, for those of you who don't know. Okay, we're dropping Annie. Come on, Tibbers. It's playtime. Zoom Nimblify. Heal four. Kill this guy. This is a free attack, but I think we'll bring on the student first um, because we can, of course, play off Annie's ability. Danny, wanna play with Tippers? Okay, that sounds like fun. Oh, another elusive as well. Very, very nice. This is an exceptional start. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Okay, we do a blades hand, blades um hand and kill Lulu here. Whoa, you gotta focus. All right, we'll do another blades edge and we'll take out the Green Gate Lookout because we I don't want it to strike and reduce the cost of any allies in its uh, in in the enemy hand. It's all right. My name's Annie. It's okay, it's cool. We can drop the prefect here. That could be good. And we can always play spells, so I think that's what we'll do. What good's power if you're not going to use it? <laughs> you sound just like Tibbers! Okay, I think this is what we'll do. Hold on. Let's see if we have enough damage for, you know, um, Annie here. Uh, this will deal six... This will do how much damage again? Six damage, right? So, 6 damage to the Nexus, and we plus 4, that will be 10. Um, Overwhelm here will be, how much? We'll be pl we'll, we've play we played 1 Blade's Edge, and we play Annie's ability, that will be two, uh, 2 two skills in total, right? So, that will be 2 plus 1, and that's going to be, you know, plus 1 for each skill. So, 2 plus 1, that's going to be 3. Um, I'm worried about a Lulu block, so I think... No, you know what? We can do this. Since it's a f since this guy is fearsome, chances are it will not be able to block with these two. So I think we'll just do a spell singer and stun the Lulu. 
It's Mr. Kythera! Kai. It's Kythera, Annie. Hey, Tibbers. Fang's turn. Stop eating or no more Okay. Eat. We should be fine. Yeah, we're fine. <laughs> okay, so I think we have excess damage because of the overwhelm, and obviously these are all low health units. Uh, plus the what is it? The uh, fearsome from disposing and nothing's gonna block it. Of course, Annie is elusive, and we win here. It's almost time. Come on, that all you got? Well, not quite, but um, we still win. What if it stands on doesn't matter because Blade's Edge for the victory. <laughs> Cool. So that is the Annie um, chapter done. And obviously, as you can see here, um, kind of good. I would say I'm kind of happy with this, but we're not here to, you know, <laughs> you know uh, rest on our laurels. So let's go ahead and just move on. All right. And that is about it. So that is Annie's chapter two done. And that means we are um, halfway through, I would say, with most of the champion, you know, the new champion chapters. Annie's done. Jin is done. Uh, so when you have Alawi and of course the um, accursed Bart left that, you know, I'm yet to unlock Bart. Um, so yeah, we're going to have to leave that for later. I think in the next episode, we're going to do Alawi's um, chapter two. I currently have a quest in progress with her. I think it must be some other generic quest that I'm trying to, um, you know, uh, I was trying to level her up or something. I'm not really sure. Uh, you know what? We'll see what happens if it's a, what is it? Um, the actual quest with Alawi. I might just, you know, surrender and just, you know, restart from the beginning. But, uh, you know, leave, leave that part to me. I will decide. Uh, but for now, we are going to have to end the video here it's really really unfortunate i cannot stress how unfortunate it is that i still have bart locked because obviously i have no control over what type of fragments we get but uh, hopefully that's gonna be you know that's gonna change soon i really really want to get bart done before we move on into the other um remaining 11 um you know tw 10 depending on whether you count lee sin uh, as the champions that i have unlocked because obviously he's still locked for me but yeah you leave that part for me for now we're gonna end the video here so hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode of of uh, the Path of Champions here with Annie, where we completed her chapter two. And if you did, consider leaving a like as well as subscribing. I really appreciate your support. But most importantly, it's so that you don't miss future episodes or playthroughs of single player content just like this one here on the channel. And with that being said, this is Kavlo signing off. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you all so much for joining me. Hopefully, I catch you all in the next episode. Goodbye.